Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story number one, Humans are Weird, Abrasive, written by Betty Adams. It is very fortunate for human friend Sarah that you were able to come with us. Rolls tight commented as she shuffled into a transport tank. I could not have acquired nearly so much of the samples she required with my speed over such surfaces. Seven Sister gave an absent click of agreement as she continued picking up the broken fragments on the strange volcanic rock. The fragile specimen had been improperly secured in one of the mass transports overhead bins, and only the membrane shield she was wearing when it fell had protected her from severe injury. She shifted her head underneath the protective hood and winced as the material rubbed her antennae, tasting of nothing but synthetic fibers. She tossed the last of the fragments into the carry case and glanced around for any more. She didn't see any and rose to her full height. She sealed the carry case and watched as rolls tight activated the air filters and vacuum drone. When the sensors declared the interior of the transport free of dangerous fragments of volcanic rock, Seventh Sister pulled the membrane shield with a flex of relief. She flared out of full and extended her antennae several times. She shook off all four legs one at a time and was in the process of giving her abdomen a good flex when Rolls Tight gave a disgruntled hum. Seventh Sister focused her attention on her and smiled as she saw many appendages struggling to find perches on the sides of the tank. Do you require assistance? Seventh Sister asked. Yes, Rolls Tight admitted. These old isolation tanks were built too large for the medium mass undulate. Could you go fetch human friend Mac? I am capable of assisting you myself, Seven Sister assured her. She tripped lightly over to the tank and offered her forearms at the point of leverage. The undulate wrapped her gripping appendages around her primary joint politely, but seemed to hesitate to put any weight on the limb. Are you sure you're capable? Rolls Tight asked. I don't usually climb anyone over fifth. The strength gradient is negligible between fifth and tenth, Seventh Sister assured her, and I am well above the mean strength of her fifth. Are you sure of this? Rolls tight pressed. You are not attempting to prove your usefulness to the collector by risking a stress injury. Seventh Sister laid a frill against her neck and managed to keep the offense out of her voice. I am not a human's Rolls tight, she said. Rollstein gave a hum of apology and held out her gripping appendages. Her weight was slightly painful, but, uh, as she had predicted, well within the tolerance of Seven Sisters' joints. When Rollstein was safely on the floor, they began to leap together. So, what did human friend Sarah want with those volcanic rocks? Rollstein asked. I'm uncertain, Seven Sisters said. She said it could be used in a medical application for the problem that she was having with her feet. Oh yes, Rolstein said. Her outer membrane cracked and was bleeding, if I recall correctly. Seventh Sister felt a shudder of horror go through her at the cavalier nature of the statement. How could responsible people be so calm about membrane damage? Yes, was all that she could say. So does the volcanic action generate the mineral complex she needs? Rolstein asked. I don't think it's a mineral deficiency she is correcting, the Seventh Sister said. Her instructions focused on the density of the air pockets in the rock and its general density. Hey! A cheerful human voice called out from the corridor ahead. Is that my pumice? The human friend Sarah, Rolstein answered. We were just wondering what you wanted it for. My feet. Human friend Sarah said cheerfully. Got some nasty calluses from all the hiking we've been doing. When they split, they took some live skin with them. How will these mineral samples help with that? Rolls tight asked, will you need access to the mineral grinders? Grinders? Human friend Sarah asked, nah, they're small enough now. I just need one flat surface for the abrasion to work. Abrasion? Sarah's sister asked as the human friend Sarah took a sample container. Rolls tight gave a hum of satisfaction and understanding. Well, I can't scrape off the dead skin with cotton, human friend Sarah said with a shrug. 
Thanks for getting these for me. Hope it's no trouble. Human friend Sarah gave them a friendly wave as she turned and started back down the corridor. Beside Seven's sister, Rollstite lifted several appendages and waved them idly at the Shatar. Seven's sister shook out her suddenly stiff frill and glanced down at the undulate. Do you have a question, Rollstite? Seven's sister managed to ask. I have never seen your frill quite that color, Rollstite observed in surprised tones. What does it indicate? Emotional shock and some horror, Seven Sister admitted. Possibly disbelief and hopefully lack of understanding. Was it something that human friend Sarah said? Rolstein asked. She, Seven Sister began slowly, dabbing her eyes rapidly with the biscuits in an attempt to calm herself. She implied that she was going to use jagged surface of volcanic rock to scrape away the outer layer of her membrane. Yes, Rolstein agreed. I should have been able to surmise we do something similar for when our gripping appendages get too rough. But we usually use an abrasive paste. Gripping such a large rock must require gloves if their hands are not equally calloused as their feet. Seven Sister stared down at Rolls tight in quiet contemplation. She finally curled her antennae tight to her head and gave her a frill a shake. I uh, think I need to call my mother, she said as she turned and walked down the corridor. Men of story. Story number two. Human on board. Fitness. Pillar in darkness. Voyage. Pull card. Alpha. Five. Iota. Delta. Epsilon. Seven. Iota. Omega. Eta. Four. Personal journey log. Gift directs. Ship coordinator. Log. 53,635. Contextual translation enabled. Example. The onboard human continues to cause trouble to both me and my crew. I was warned that humans made life difficult. However, I was not informed that they do this by completely misunderstanding everything. You cannot prepare any ship to take a human on board, because the first thing they seem to do is figure out how to undo your preparation. This log is about how we fail to prepare for the fitness needs of our human. Since humans are used to a gravity of 1.639 times higher than our normal onboard ship gravity, they require additional work to do each day to maintain their health. We equipped a room in the human habitat to meet these needs. This room was furnished with every machine a human could need to stay healthy. The addition of this room added serious mass to the human habitat, causing a large amount of design and engineering headaches. Our human was not satisfied with this arrangement. The human did not communicate why to us. Honestly, the human didn't even tell us that it was not happy with the provided gymnasium. In retrospect, this was probably for the best. I suspect that Ralsevit might have done something drastic to the habitat if he had. Once the human received access to the fabrication facilities, he set about creating a solution to his exercise problem. The human started out innocently enough, getting the automated assembly equipment to produce high durability cloth and high strength thread. Then the human requested 81.647 kilograms of Whipple plating and various sizes. The security footage reveals that the human then attempted to shape the plate for 20.859 minutes. This footage was saved to my personal data space and I've watched it multiple times as a reminder that humans, like the very young, are most dangerous when unsupervised. I feel that I must describe the full range of ways that a human attempted to deform the plating. The first, the human tried to use its body weight and a knee to get it to bend. This caused the plating to elastically deform with a great degree of force and when the human lost a hold of it, leaving a visible dent in the wall. Since it worked so great the first time, the human repeated this foolishness several times until the lighting fixture, the automated assembly equipment, the door, and a curious screwman's mental state were all damaged by flying plates. Once the traumatized Herky fled, the human decided that they needed tools and ordered a hammer and a blowtorch. Oh boy. I opened the door to the fabrication bay to the site of a human using a machine that amounted to at least 20% of the ship's value as an anvil. A machine that, I may add, could fabricate the very object the human was attempting to in a 6.953 minutes. I almost offered the human my skull to use as a hammer instead, merely as a way out of madness. 
The only thing that saved me was the entrance of the Russell Vault. The Russell Vault darted to the human and then he and the three other crew members dragged it back to its habitat and locked the doors. When the human woke up again, they were loud and upset that we had stolen their medical device. We decided that the human could deal with their own garbage and dumped it, sands, blowtorch and hammer back into the human's habitat. Yeah, the grand plan of this human was to make a shirt and stitch plates until they were suitably heavy. It rendered the heaviest room in the habitat redundant with a heavy shirt. I really hate onboard humans sometimes. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.